All right, so take a look at this here. I've got some code and I've got a function that I'd like to extract because I'm using this in multiple spots here. And so what I can do here inside of Z with the new prediction subsystem, I can just come up above here and start typing out a function. And just start typing the name of the function I'd like here. You can see it's suggesting to, you can see it's suggesting a body here that matches the code that I'm targeting. When I hit tab here then, take note that after I hit tab, there's another tab indicator here that says jump to edit. If I hit tab again, you can see it's now selecting the original code. And if I hit tab one more time here, you can see it replaces it with my new function. So it just took a few steps here to extract a function. I didn't even have to use a refactoring tool to do that. All right, so if you'd like to set this up and use this, if you open up your settings for Z here, inside of here, there's a section for features. You'll need to enable the inline completion provider and set that to Z. So that would be instead of GitHub Copilot or Supermaven. And then once you set that, go ahead and restart Z, and then look in the lower right-hand corner here for an icon, a little Z icon. And you have some options here for enabling or disabling the inline completions, as well as an option here, after you get started using it, you can actually go in and rate completions that have been previously generated. And so I can just go through this file here and I could pull back the edits that were suggested here. For example, here's that function I just generated. You can see the suggestion for the function body. And then down below here, you can see the subsequent suggestion here to tab into the existing code and get rid of it, replace it with a call to the new function. And so if I had any issues with this, I could come down and provide feedback. Like maybe I want to say, I wish you would look further down below in the file. There were more instances of this pattern here to clear things out. You can see it got cut off right here at the M shortcut key that I'm setting up, which is going to be right before I come back here, right before the next instance that I want to replace here. Yeah, you can see that right here. So one thing I'd like to see is a bigger context when the refactorings are being performed because it could easily have found this instance as well. But if that doesn't happen, by the way, if you want to trigger that completion, I should be able to come down here and just make a change to this code here, get some suggestions going, maybe even come up above and start. Yeah, there you go. You can see over on the right here, it's suggesting to replace all this with the new function here. So I can just hit tab here to accept that then. So that's replaced that chunk of code. And then actually I should have looked to see if there's a tab to continue that. But if not, I can come down here and I can do the same thing with this chunk. And there you go. You can see it's got a suggestion here for this instance tab to get through that. Looks like it left a line though. I'd want to get rid of that. I don't want both of them. All right, so another example here. Let's say I've got this code here that divides the width of the frame by two. Let's say I want to extract that out into a variable. Well, in that case, I can just come right up above here can start making a new variable here. Maybe I want to call this half of X. And you can see on the right here, the suggestion to generate here. So if I just go ahead and tab complete that, because that's exactly what I want. So not only did it finish the definition of the new variable, it actually finished making a change to replace it in the next line of code here. And I want to undo that though. I want to try this one more time here. All right, so if I hit tab to complete here, that completes it, yeah. I missed the opportunity here. Do you see how there's now a tab option over on the right down below here? If I hit tab again here, it replaces the next instance. All right, and you can see it's asking to jump to edit again. Go ahead and do that and tab to complete that. And so that's all it takes to step through and replace all the usages of that calculation with a new variable. And then I just noticed I actually didn't give this the name I wanted here. I wanted this to say half of the width so in that case, well, I could just come over and start changing this and I could put WI and then DTH, I could rename the variable. And you can see here, it's suggesting to complete that on the next line as well to replace that. And I can just tab again through all the instances here and it'll replace that variable with the new name. Basically, that's a rename refactoring without having to actually have the tool to do that. Now, I'm not at all suggesting that a simple rename refactoring is the best use of a prediction system like this. Instead, what I'm trying to convey is that refactoring is a good way to think about how you can guide the tooling to predict what you need next. So if you can think about the changes you want to make in terms of a common refactoring, that's an easy way, if you will, to prompt the model instead of maybe needing to open up a tool like the inline assistant here with control enter and then type in a prompt here to rename some variable. Instead of doing that, you can use refactoring as a way to basically guide the model. A lot like with GitHub Copilot, how we use stuff like a comment here to suggest the next line of code that's going to be generated. Well, refactorings are a good way to prompt the model. Now, one little tip that I've noticed here, if I want to rename a variable, maybe the half width one here, if I come down to maybe the third usage of this here and I try to rename it here, maybe put a Y on the end, 
So in this case, if you can see the light red here over the letter Y, if I tab to complete this here, it's just suggesting to get rid of my change to that variable. And so what I've noticed is if you want to rename a variable, especially, but with really any set of changes, do it up at the very top of the change that you want to make here. Go to the very first variable in this case and make that change. And now you can see instead of getting rid of the new Y that I added, you can see on the next instance here, it's got a little Y that it's suggesting. So if I hit tab here, it'll add that. Tab again, it's going to add that down here then. And then once more, it'll add it down below at the last usage. So go to the start of the code that you want to modify. Avoid trying to modify it in the middle. Of course, you can always try in the middle. And if it works, that's great. But if you're having trouble, go to the very start of the code and start your change right there. All right, so now let's say I have a different function here that types out some text. Let's say I want to add a new parameter here that will allow me to provide a delay. Well, in that case, maybe I want to come in here and just start typing out an add in delay here. And you can see right now it's already suggesting that I add a default for that if it's not set. So I can tab through that. And you can see tab again there, jump to edit. If I hit tab one more time here, you can see it's adding in the code that's actually going to perform the delay. So just hit tab to complete that. And there you go, I'm done. So all I had to do in that case was just start typing the name of the parameter and it'll take care of the rest. All right, so here's another example. This one I really like here. So I've got a big long list of if and else if blocks here. And I'd like to add in another else if block for a different condition here. And so all I have to do here actually, come down, add in a new line here, start typing else if. And then in my case, I'm looking for the popover element. And as you can see here, it's suggesting just like the other else if branches here, it's suggesting to insert role and two equal signs before what I typed, as well as it corrects the AX popover. So just figured that all out. Hit tab to complete. And then in this case, I know I need to make one change here, and that is adding a space in here. At some point, I'm actually hoping it can be smart enough to realize that when I'm adding these extra caveats here with these else if branches, it's almost always because I've got two words here popping over are considered separate. I need to split those apart then, and that's why I'm adding this block here. Hasn't figured it out yet, but hey, this is good enough. Type in all the ceremony and just let me make the one change I need to make. 